Sarah from Average Betty here, and I'm making meatballs. When you take the time to make homemade meatballs and sauce, it smells like grandma's in your kitchen. And I mean that in the best way possible. Let's make meatballs. I've got some ground beef here. Can you use some other ground meat or a combination of ground meats? Go for it. This is finely chopped onion, minced garlic, parsley, crushed red pepper flakes, a little Italian herb blend, panko breadcrumbs, which I know are not traditional, tomato sauce, and beaten eggs. Get this started with a spoon, and then get out your most important kitchen tool, your meat hooks. Get this all incorporated and check out your mixture. You don't want it too moist or too dry. And you also don't want to forget the salt like I just did. Get that mixed together. And this looks good to me. Set this aside. Now to form the balls. Just grab a hunk of meat and form it into a ball. It's not rocket science. A meat head could make a meatball. This is a good size for serving with spaghetti or for meatball sandwiches. You can also make mini meatballs, which are great for appetizers at parties. If you're making mini meatballs, you'll want to put them on a baking sheet and bake them in the oven. Trust me, you will go crazy chasing a hundred mini meatballs around a pan. When they're done, they'll look like this. If I'm making larger meatballs, I brown them in the same pot I'm going to make the sauce in. I'm going to brown these spicy Italian sausages. These will cook in the sauce and help to flavor it, and the sauce will also help flavor the sausages. Okay, so I've cooked the sausages and set them aside. Now it's time for the meatballs. You want to cook the meatballs in batches, trying to keep them round as you brown them on all sides. A lot of flavor can come from the pan browning, but it's probably healthier to bake them in the oven. As they cook, just remove them from the pot until all the meatballs are cooked. Now for the sauce. This is celery and carrot. Here are onions and a little mixed garlic. Give that a stir, and I'm going to deglaze the pot with some white wine. You can use red if you want. I like the brighter flavor of the white wine. Now I'm going to add parsley, Italian herb blend, a pinch of crushed red pepper, and some salt. Give that a good stir. Add a little more white wine and get that good and combined. These are diced tomatoes. Get this mixed together and here's a splash of cream. The cream helps to make the sauce smoother, sweeter, and less acidic. You want to let this cook together for a little bit and let the flavors get to know each other. Now add the tomato sauce. Give that a good stir. And last but not least, the bay leaf. Stir that in. Now it's time to fill this pot of sauce with meat. You want to hide the sausages. Sausages! Get in there! Then the meatballs. Meaty! Stir carefully so you don't break up the meatballs. Reduce the heat to a simmer and put a lid on it. Give this at least an hour. But if you can go longer, all the better. After about an hour, you'll have this. Hey, big boy. Mmm, molten hot tomato sauce. A little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Just how you want a meatball to be. Serve the meatballs just like this or on top of spaghetti. Of course, there's always the meatball sub and don't forget about mini meatball appetizers. Get the meatballs recipe at averagebetty.com. I hope you give my meatballs and sauce a try and I really hope you make them for grandma sometime. Find me on Facebook and Twitter and drop by my home at averagebetty.com. Thanks for watching and subscribing. See you next time. Mmm,